So Angel, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Um, well, I was born and raised in Newark uh, my, I, so far my entire life. Um, I guess I've been a person that's always been like um, into the arts, but I didn't really know it until I guess after high school when like I started viewing more artistic kind of you know work. I saw I was working more with artists, you know, musicians, uh, sculptors, and stuff like that out of high school, and something kind of in me was just like it, it all makes sense. You know, like trying so many things before, um, you know, college. I was in a, tr I was in a vocational school where I tried many different, like, you know, trades, culinary, cosmetology, um, web design and web development, even a little bit of like, like basic law enforcement. And the problem with all that is like, it kind of just gave me a, a general rundown of things I just wasn't interested in until I found out that, you know, art is kind of something that I live and breathe. And I never stop thinking about. So I'm definitely a creative person that's looking to find ways to use my hands and express that. Um, I have a brother and sister. I'm the oldest, which I also think has been a uh, big effects on kind of how I think and how I act. Being the oldest, um, I definitely feel like a leadership role was thrown at me from like a young age, and uh, it's making it's given me, I, I guess like a need in order to like communicate like with others and really lead a little bit so that's why i found um that's what happened that's why i am the way i am now so yeah where'd you go to school i went to school in well for high school i went to north 13th street tech vocation it's a vocational school it doesn't exist now it actually is replaced by kip um i did a semester in bloomfield college where i learned a lot of video editing uh music softwares as well um creative writing um which i also have like a fond love for as well like i have always been told i'm a very good writer and i think that stems from the communication i have and i'm able to put it on paper so uh, you know i learned a lot of that stuff in bloomfield college and currently i go to ss county which i'm learning um a certificate for digital media and electronic publishing which in basic terms is kind of just like for web, it's it's web development and web design. So it's basically the functionality and the creative aspect of online kind of worlds and stuff. What first interested you about the Glassroots Peters Valley Fellowship? Um, to be totally honest, I never even heard of it until a fellow from last year, her name was Adeline. We met in Essex County, first of all, me and her. And immediately we kind of just hit it off. We kind of, there was something about her and there was something about me that we really just connected to one another. I think both of us have the same like bond for like and love for art. And she one day hit me up and was like, "Hey, listen, there's a fellowship, and you know, uh, the requirements are really kind of you know just you didn't need any artistic background, you didn't need any kind of like credits even. Um, they didn't even ask like your parents' income, which a lot of programs ask that." And it you know causes a lot of students to not really make it through. It really was like, are you interested and do you love art and can you be committed for you know, I think twelve weeks basically. And I said, sure, yeah. And that's when I really first heard about Glassroots and what this what this place does for the community. To be honest. So what was the highlight of the fellowship while you were here at Glassroots? I think the people I've met. I really I I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm very weird picky person with the people I meet I do definitely think <clears throat> that I've met a lot of people before I met Glassroots um, a lot of different artists a lot of different peoples in certain corporations and stuff like that and they all kind of like lacked something and when I went into Glassroots I didn't know what it was until I talked to the people here and I realized that it was the hu it was like a humanity but like not like that it was more like a a it, these are people that like just love with doing what they do and they're not afraid to show it. There's no like fake smiles. There's no, none of that. It was truly like, it was truly just a real place with real people that did real things. And I think that the highlight was just all the people I met, Alex, you know, like who helped kind of um, all of the, uh, the fellows kind of, you know, work on mural, I uh, work on mosaics, work on um, Pat de, uh, Pat de uh a lot of fabric work too. I love, I think another like a little small highlight was the flower arrangement thing. I actually really liked it. 
because you, you know you know why while, while i did enjoy all the things in the you know in the previous time like all the glass work and the artwork i think the floral arrangement taught me a lot about how design and placement of products is so important pricing as well how to price your work was a very important thing we learned from that so if i were to pick a highlight i think it would be the flower arrangement and i actually think it should be kind of carried through the fellows the fellowship to be honest if i could ask you like what when you know being executive i'm sorry like, executive director executive director uh I'm sure there's got to be a difference in your daily life and daily work life, and I would like to know more about that. What what makes the Glassroots Fellowship so make your day different and like make you give you a different perspective and stuff like that? Yeah, it's a great question, and I'm gonna say the same thing back to you that you said to me. Yeah. What makes the fellowship so um, important to Glassroots is the people. And when I say the people, I'm thinking about you and your colleagues, your fellow fellows. Mm -hmm. And um, what is unique is that each and every one of you are um, so talented, so creative, so passionate, and so much potential that I'm so excited that Glassroots can help fill in the story and be part of your story mm -hmm. as you become an artist or whatever career it is. And so it's really the people, they're very special who end up as fellows. For me personally, I get to know you. And it's just as you said, we have a lot of programs where people come in, they come and go. And I think that what we do here is unique is important, is educational, but most of the people, they walk in the door, they leave the door. I don't get to know them personally. And so the fellowship on a personal level for me is really important because I get to, to learn more about each one of you, um, your motivations, who you are. Um, you help make the program better for this year and next year. And it's really why I work at Glassroots. It's, um, I walked away from your exhibitions both times. You had two exhibitions, right? Yeah. And I called up, um, I I called up my boss, the board president, yeah. and I called up um, a colleague from another job, and I said, "This is why I do what I do." Um, when I spend the time with you and see the work that you create and how you talk about it is so beautiful and so meaningful to me personally. I started work on June 1st, 2020, and it just so happened there was a cohort that year that was starting here on that very same day. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I also just have this personal connection to this program because I feel like I started with the program and started with the fellows, and I'm kind of along for the journey with all of you. You're kind of on, like, in a, in a sense, the same like journey that we're going to start Right, from, exactly, know. and so I, 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 I think I have that special personal connection and it's very meaningful to me, but I'm going to say it's the same thing. It's the people. It really is. It's very important. And it's with, you know, people make the world go around, you know what I mean? And that goes the same for organizations as well. Um, when you have good people, an organization can go for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, and that I just see that we're going to be, um, we're talking about your story today, but what's more important to me is that Glassroots is always going to be a part of your story. Yeah, it really is. That's such a crazy thing. Like no matter what happens in the future, like, Glassroots is definitely one of those like like it's the building bricks like I mm -hmm. in my opinion it's like it's the it's a layer it's a layer like that base layer of any house like a basement the foundation for my artistic future and I really I can't be more grateful than what this program has given me the good thing about the fellowship is what you got out of it after because a lot of programs you know I was worried I really was worried after those 12 weeks when I got back home I was like what now and Glassroots gave me the what now and that's a very important for me, for programs to do, not to just give you this amazing experience, which is great, but like what happens after? There's got to be something, you know, even if it's not so much, maybe even a few words of advice, people to speak to, you know, connections and stuff like that. But you guys went above and beyond with that by, you know, employing me as a teacher assistant and teaching me how to, you know, work with children, work with teenagers, work with high schoolers, the same place I was in, you know, and I'm looking and I'm thinking of myself in, the, in their shoes and I'm like, if someone were to come to me the way I'm coming to them, I think I would have been able to find my artistic passion way earlier. And that's exactly what I like about this fellowship and what it's done for me.
Angel, what advice would you give to future fellows? Um, while I think it's very broad what I'm about to say and kind of like very general, um, I think have fun in a sense where it's like, as an artist myself, I just getting into stuff like this, um, I tend to stress out a little bit. When you make a piece and you're really just working on it, you don't like it, you repeat it, and then you work on it, and sometimes there's a time crunch, which is going to happen because, you know, we forget that, like, art is also a place of work. And those things, those kind of rulers and guides do not limit us, but help us work faster, better, and more efficient. And, and it's important we forget to have fun. We really do. And I feel like if I really have to, if, when I'm speaking to the future fellows, because I know like when the, when, if the fellowship happens next year, I'm going to be there and I'm going to talk to them and be like, it's, it's important to have fun. Uh, get up every day, make something that like really like speaks to you, gets to you on a personal level and kind of, um, kind of will make you take your mind off of like, oh, this is a program. Because that's what happened to me a lot, where I was like, oh, this is a program, this is a program. And I feel like that word gets a bad rap. I basically thought of it like, let me have fun while I'm doing this. There's no, there's no grades. There's no, I mean, there's a deadline at the end of the week, but it's not a problem. But a lot of the difference between this and a college class is there's a grade and you have to meet certain requirements. But with this, it's like, go in there, make the art you want to make, speak to the people you need to speak to, and just have fun in the end, you know? The fellowship is a long experience. It's like you're going to go through a lot of change, a lot of hardship, and sometimes you may have things back in your home city or wherever you're from that you're going to have to leave behind for a while, even when you're in grassroots for the six weeks, because then the next six weeks you go out into, you know, late in New Jersey, Peters Valley, uh, which is basically like they give you room and board, but you're away from your house for like seven weeks. Understand that you have to be ready for the commitment. It's, uh, it's not like, I don't want to make it sound scary, you know, it's not a bad time. It's an incredible time. It is so incredible to the point where it's like, it's sacrifice. It really is. It's one of those first things where I, I had to sacrifice a lot of time with my friends during the summer. Uh, even though I got a stipend every week, I had to sacrifice working for more money, but I, 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 I would give it up more and more for another, if I had to do the, if they asked me, like, do you want to do the fellowship again right now as you speak? I, without a doubt, yeah, I would do it again. And I think that's what I'm trying to get to the future fellows is be committed, um, realize that it's going to be a long journey, but you're going to love it. And in, in the end, there's no way that you're just going to, if you're committed and you love art and you love people, there's no way you're going to have a bad time. There's no way you're going to get out of that and be like, I didn't get anything out of it. There's just no way. So how did this program change you as an artist and as a person? I, you know, it's funny, I didn't even have any work prior. So I think it was, it was difficult. I feel like in a, in a place where I was, where I am now, it should have been way more difficult than it was because I was just starting from zero. I truly believe I was starting from zero before Glassroots. And so it's hard to kind of say that like it changed me. It more kind of like found it. I found something within myself. So I guess if I could say, how did it change me? It made me more open about what I really want, truly inside. Um, I've gone a lot through my life kind of like giving, the, being a yes man, being like saying things in order to kind of just get out of them. Um, but with Glass Suits, it's changed, it's changed that. I, I, I've learned that like that's not gonna help myself. And um, it's a skill that it, it definitely helped develop that skill for me personally where I became like, this is what I want. How are we gonna work towards this? Is this doable or not? If it's not, I'll find a way out. Adaptability, um, communication, and artistic fire, sort of in a sense. All those three things is kind of what Glassroots made me find within myself. It was definitely a big form of self-discovery and therapy a little bit and um, I'm more direct now. I'm more, I'm more creative in a sense where it's like, I, I, I know what sort of works and I know what doesn't. Like I, I'm more decisive when it comes to that and I'm confident within myself. 
And I think that's really important for an artist. You have to go with your gut. And Glassroots gave me that, like, that formula, more of like a, uh, an encouragement to be like, yes, go with your gut. And I think that's what Glassroots did for me, to be honest.